when you don't love the truth you will open up yourself to counterfeit and to deception now you see people who are not waiting who are not willing to wait long enough for the substance for the truth of god for the original from god and they settle for shadow after a little while the moment you see the world has gained you see the things in the world has gained you cannot fully embrace the gain that is in Christ. hello there i'm tingia kala your host on the kingdom agenda kingdom agenda is a platform for teaching people of all walks of life uh, the way of the lord it's a platform also for discipling the christian in the way of the Lord, for imparting the Christian with the wisdom and the grace of God for doing exploits on the earth. And also, God, I'd like you to understand, is raising in this hour a new generation. A generation of people who will trust Him more than their skills, their strength, and their human ties. A generation of people who will accurately and effectively represent God on the face of the earth, thereby having dominion. Also, a generation of people who have been made ready for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. I can assure you as you watch this broadcast and take it to heart, especially as these words are in line with God's written word, your life will never be the same. Your heart will be set on fire. You'll be delivered from the religious precepts of men. You will come into the glorious liberty of the sons of God and you will never be the same. Let's go into God's presence together as we hear this word. Matthew and chapter 7 I like to read from verse 21 to verse 28 and I'm reading from the New King James translation of the Bible Matthew chapter 7 from verse 21 to verse 28 are you there and these are the words of Jesus Christ and I read not everyone who says to me Lord, Lord, shall enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name, and cast out demons in your name, and done many wonders in your name? And then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness therefore whoever hears these sayings of mine and does them i will liken him to a wise man who built his house on the rock and the rain descended and the floods came i shared with us sometimes ago i think late, late last year floods in the bible is only depicted in a negative sense when you read all through bible the bible from genesis to revelation floods are only depicted in a negative sense and so you see it again here jesus speaking he said and the rain descended and the floods came and the winds blew and beat on the house on that house and it did not fall for it was founded on the rock but everyone who hears these sayings of mine and does not do them will be like a foolish man who built his house on the sand and the rain descended the floods came and the winds blew and beat on that house and it fell and great was its fall and so it was when jesus had ended these sayings that the people were astonished at his teaching this morning i'd like to share i started this line of thought a fortnight ago two weeks ago and i'd like to um share further on this subject responses to truth responses to truth let us pray father we thank you because your presence here this morning we appreciate the liberty of the spirit we appreciate the life we have in jesus we appreciate the privilege we have to come to sit at your feet that we may hear your word and do it and we give you the glory for the privilege we have we ask of you this morning as we share your word and disseminate your counsel we ask for enabling grace to hear these things 
and corresponding action because we hear these things we thank you father for answer prayers because we are prayed in jesus name and the people of god say believe in amen, amen. a fortnight ago we started to bring to our attention the importance of god's word and how as children of god god has placed a premium on the highest level the need for us to respond to his word god's word is god john chapter 1 and verse 1 makes us to understand that he said in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god so one reason why god expects us to respond to his word is because his word represents him his word the word of god is god so that's one reason also god expects us to respond to his word and live by his word because his word endures forever the bible makes us to understand in first peter and chapter one we begin to read from verse um, 21 it talks about how i mean flowers fade the grass withers except but the word of god endures 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 to endure is to outlast trials to endure is to overcome challenges to endure is to go through whatever you have to go through in order to get to your predetermined destination he said the word of god endures forever meaning the word of god endures true to eternity so god wants us to live by his word because his word represents him his word is him and his word endures if you are going to be an overcomer in life you will have to learn how to live by god's word also god wants us to live by his word because his word is purified the psalmist makes us to understand that god's word has been passed through the furnace of fire purified seven times and the word of god came out unscathed the word of god comes and came out and comes out on the other side refined so god knows that if my word has been through every fire and stands the fire and outlasts the fire if my word is in you no matter the fire that comes upon your life the word that outlasted the fire will make you to outlast the fire whatever the fire of life that may come against your life praise god praise the name of jesus so the word of god has been purified seven times the word of god endures forever the word of god also sets free there are people in captivity young stars in captivity people given to drugs given to vices people uh, young people given to um, prostitution uh, people given to stealing all manner of corruption in the world the corruption fame brings the corruption money brings the corruption uh, uh, um, popularity brings the corruption of power people who behave humble behave timid behave like they cannot um, harm a fly and then you give them a powerful position a position that makes the kings of the earth to revere them a position of power uh, uh, and dignity and suddenly you begin to see some other dimensions in the office holders i remember a few days ago i'm trying to remember where this discussion um, uh, took place but this person was talking about how yes it was in abuja this was about 10 days ago i was in abuja and then this man a country director of a franchise that i went for its opening in abuja on that on that particular time he said he was telling us after the opening that there was this guy who used to get in touch with him come over to see him and all that and then suddenly he was put into office he was selected in Lagos state to become a commissioner and then now he told this uh, new friend of mine that i'm sorry if i'm not able to pick your calls or if i'm not able to call you my pa will call you and he said immediately told him if your pa calls me i will not respond because when you are a nobody when you are a nobody in, qu in quotes and unquote you are eager to call me you are eager to see me you are eager to visit me now you think you have a political appointment you now want to degrade me to the level of talking to your pa he said i will not talk to your pa
So these are things we find in the world. The corrupting influence of power, of fame, of money, and all that. But I come to understand from God's word, if you live by God's word, whether you are rich or poor, whether you are famous or obscure, whether you are mighty or lowly, if you live by God's word, the word of God will liberate you from worldly entanglements. The corrupting influence in the world. Are you still in here this morning? Are you still in here this morning? Yeah, unfortunately, people in the constituency of the church also want to live by some parameters. We want to throw our weight we want people to revere us. We want people who used to be able to look us in the eye not to be able to look us in the eye anymore. We want people to revere us even by sin, just by seeing our shadows. But Jesus said in the kingdom for you, it shall not be so. But you will find it being so with many Christians who will feel that they have been their worth has been diminished because they have not been allowed to sit in front, for example. Because they have been ushered in a backside section of the local assembly. They are even willing to take a walk from the service. From the very presence of the almighty God. Why? Because unfortunately, but in such a ways, the ways of the world, the values of the world, the things that make the world and the people in the world to feel important, they have crept in unawares amongst us in church. But God is saying, if you live by my word, if you uphold the standard of my word, you will not come under such corrupting influences. So he said, Jesus himself speaking, you shall know the truth. You sh because his word is truth. You shall know the truth. You shall know his word. And the truth shall set you free. Hmm. If there is anyone under the corrupting influence of fame, the corrupting influence of opposite sex, the op corrupting influence of money, the corrupting influence of power, and you want to live for jesus may the word of truth set you free in jesus name but quickly from a fortnight ago we now started to show us human responses to the word of truth when it comes we are all seated in here for example but and we all claim to be christians if i say well, how many of us are christians going to heaven here all hands will fly up if I say, how many people are not sure they are going to heaven? How many people are not sure if Jesus comes now? Nobody will be courageous enough to raise his or her hand. If I say, who can see himself on the way to hell already? Nobody will even like to hear that question. But you see, the way we respond to the word of God, the way we respond to the truth of God's word, determines the final outcome of our lives. So you see when you read the jesus speaking in matthew chapter 13 from verse 1 to verse 28 he gave a foundational parable of the kingdom a parable is like a story to get across a truth like an allegory like a metaphorical uh, metaphorical stories or statements to convey truths to us but jesus said people will hear the word and the way they respond to the word fall into four categories he said there are some who when they hear the word they are like people whose condition of heart are like those who receive the word but the word has fallen by the wayside and then for some other people he said the word they received fall and fell into the midst or to the top of a rock and then for some other people he said the word when they received it it was like it fell into the midst of thorns and then for some other people he said the word when they received it it was like it fell into good ground the word is the i mean the seed that the sower is sowing is the word of god the sower is god through various human agencies like as i'm preaching here this morning god is using me to do the work of a sower like a tv minister preaching god uses the tv minister to do the work of a sower like you listen to an internet broadcast god uses um, the person preaching on the internet on social media to do the work of a sower the prophet the apostle the teacher the evangelist doing the work of a sower to cast the seed and the conditions of our hearts determines whether this precious seed eternal seed incorruptible seed of god's word is falling by the wayside though it fell into our hearts or is falling on the midst of the rock though it fell into our hearts or it fell into the midst of thorns though we received in our hearts or it falls into good ground every one of us wants to assume that the word of god has fallen into good good grounds but we started to bring to our attention our response to the word our response to the truth 
shows actually where the seed of God's word from God through human agency has fallen in our hearts. The ones by the wayside are those who lack understanding. They don't even understand what you are talking about. All they are thinking about is say what you have to say. I'm here for Thanksgiving and let me find my way. I don't care what you say. I will do what's in my mind. So they lack understanding. And when you lack understanding, you cannot act on it. The Ethiopian eunuch, a foremost minister, probably the governor of the central bank of Ethiopia or the minister of finance, went all the way for a religious service. He left Ethiopia for Jerusalem for a religious service. And he was coming back unfulfilled. The questions in his heart were not answered. Acts of the Apostles in chapter 8. And the Holy Spirit moved, um, moved Simon, I mean, moved Philip and said, Join yourself to this chariot. And he asked him, Do you understand what you are reading? Acts of the Apostles, chapter 8. And this mighty renowned leader who had been in service but left without understanding said, How can I understand except a man teach me? And from that point, the Bible says, Philip started to bring him understanding. That which that prophet Isaiah is talking about, he's not talking about Isaiah himself, he's talking about the Messiah. His name is Jesus. So, until understanding came, a man traveled about 1,000 kilometers and was going back home unfulfilled. Countless people go every year to Jerusalem, come back with JP, Tunjakala JP, Richard JP, Kingsley JP, and Yemi JP. What's your own biblical name or English name? Let me give you John. JP. JJP. Let me leave my wife this morning. <laughs> they went all the way to Jerusalem, step where they claim Jesus stepped. Wrote, they rode the boat on the Red Sea, but came back without understanding. These are like precious seeds, incorruptible seed of God's word, that fell by the wayside. What you hear is not enough. What you understand sets you in a good position to walk in wisdom. So for some, they go to church every week, they go for midweek meetings, but they live lacking understanding. That's the first category. And then the second category is those who have precious seed, incorruptible seed, sent by God, sown by God. But the condition of their heart was like a rocky terrain. Shallow, lacking depth. Lacking depth. They receive the word, they can quote the word, they can preach the word, they can recite the word, they can recite any part of the Bible, but they lack depth. And how will you know that they lack depth? Let tribulations come. Let persecutions come. Let things come to rise against the word they claim to have. Their true color will show up. They will say, person die, now make it Jesus. I beg give this Jesus no go fit save me, make something else save me oh. told of the story of a man who was on on a high rise somewhere dangling about to fall off a high point and then someone walked up to him and said do you believe jesus he said yes i believe jesus he said then believe and jump down from that place you'll be okay i said please help me oh he said do you believe he said i believe jesus he said then i said jump by faith and you'll be okay then he said somebody else help me oh So when, how do we know conditions of the heart? Receive the word, they are in our churches. Quote the word, they are in our churches. Ordain to do ministry, they are in our churches. General overseers, they are in our churches. But let tribulation arise. You are not really the Christian you claim until tribulations have risen. <laughs> And you stand them and you come from them and you conquer them and all through all the stages you are holding on to jesus 
He said, but tribulations and persecutions arose for the word's sake. And by and by they could not bring any of the seed to fruition. So the, that's a condition of heart. If you look at your life, every time you have the opportunity to act on the word, it's like all hell breaks loose. Every time you receive a revelation, you receive an insight, you receive a prophecy, and you want to live by it, it's like all hell breaks loose. But the moment you let go of the word and you compromise, you let go of the word and you live carnally, it's like hell is calm. Word that has fallen on rocky ground. So you see believers who are ready to compromise as long as they get what they want to get and they will tell you the end justifies the means but i have come as a messenger of the lord to tell you the end never justifies the means the means must justify the end the people of the world say the end justifies the means in church some people say the end justifies the means that is even if i got it by wuru even if i got it by crookedness after all i got it and i paid my tithe god asked for 10 percent i get 30 percent what does god need again i have rubbed his back he should rub my back seeds that are falling in the mist i mean on rocky ground lacking depth the first category lacking understanding the second category lacking death and the the test for lack of death is tribulation the test for lack of death is persecution joseph received the war but tribulation came joseph received the war but persecution came from his brothers from mrs potiphar from fellow prisoners but he held on to god's war and he outlasted his tongue May you not lack death in life in your christian pilgrimage may you not lack death in jesus name and the third category are for those who lack godly priorities that is a very dangerous one he said and when the seed fell the seed from god peter called in first peter chapter one he called the word of god the incorruptible seed we claim to be fighting corruption in our nation we want to see our leaders fight corruption but is there corruption in you <laughs> because the first the main antidote to corruption is the word of god that's why he calls it the incorruptible cannot be corrupted it lands in an environment of compromise it lands in an environment of prostitution it lands in a heart that is filled with fraud the intention is so that this incorruptible seed will drive out corruption but you know what the seed that falls in the midst of thorns the bible says that cares of this life that deceitfulness of riches does not allow any of the seed to come to fruition do you know the meaning of that he's simply saying you have the seed you know god's word he wants holiness he wants integrity he wants righteousness he wants faithfulness however when you look at it if you continue this integrity you will not have money in your pocket he said i bet leave this integrity thing make i get money first even pastor needs money he no, no, he no raise offering this money no when we lack godly priorities we love god but he's not first on our list self is first others are next god is last you see after all he's a big god even if you put him for behind behind he's still god <laughs> don't fool yourself friends the seed that falls into the midst of thorns are people who carelessly handle the word of god they will do anything and everything but god is not first and they are in charge and they have preeminent positions and they are regarded by men but in their hearts they don't regard god first i love you Love. I love you. Love. Prove it. <laughs> God is making a demand for sacrifice. Is that person that 
God is making a demand. Love your neighbor even as yourself. He said, I don't love myself first. Make I love myself tired first before I think of my neighbor. So you see, they know God's word. They can quote God's word. They can preach God's word. But God is not first lacking godly priorities. What a time in God's word today. I'm sure you've been blessed. Your heart has been ignited as you listen to that broadcast today. But I'd like to challenge you beyond being a casual listener, a passive Christian. I want you to become a passionate follower of our Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, think on these words you've heard today and take them to heart. Search the scriptures if these things are so and live by them and live for Jesus. God is looking for vehicles. God is looking for vessels. He can fill him with himself and demonstrate himself and release his glory upon the earth today. But will he find you? If God can find you and use you, he will use you to do some things on the face of the earth. He will first of all transform you and then use you to transform a generation, transform the society. I want to challenge you, dear friend and brother and sister. Let us live by these words. Let us raise a new generation for our Lord on the face of the earth and the Lord will be pleased thereby. Until another broadcast, remember, Jesus, the Son of the living God, is coming back again. May we see him, may we follow him, may we worship and serve him. God bless you. Amen. Praise God. I believe someone out there has been challenged. Someone out there is willing to take a decision for Jesus today. The broadcast today has immensely blessed you and you want to take a decision thereby. I'd like to pray for you if you are willing to give your life to Jesus today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for the power of your word which has gone forth. You have said your word will not return to you empty. It shall go and prosper in that which you have sent it, and it shall accomplish that for which you sent it. And I speak into the life of this hearer who is taking the decision today to live for Jesus. I speak into your life. The power of sin, the nature of sin, the system of this world and its power is broken in your life forever. You receive a new heart from today to know Jesus, to worship Jesus, and to serve him in spirit and in truth all the days of your life. And I pray when your time on earth is over, may you spend your eternity with your maker in the mighty name of Jesus. You will never be the same. You are a whole new cre creation. All things have passed away. And behold, all things have become new. May you indeed live the new life to please God. 